Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Karen Lavender Clothesline and in today's video we have a mixed haul. We have some vintage hard goods and we also have clothing pieces that I picked up. Now I'm picking up these items to resell them on eBay. I am a full-time eBay reseller. I earn my living this way and I also create these YouTube videos about what I'm selling on eBay. So if any of that interests you, grab yourself something to drink. Let's get started. I was super excited to go to an auction last night. Now, I didn't know that I would wind up in an auction. That's pretty much my lifestyle. That's the way that I work. I set the pace for the day, and then I never know where I'm going to wind up. But yesterday, I was at two Goodwills, uh, went out to lunch, and then we hit an auction. We, meaning my boyfriend Roger and I, Roger is also a reseller. I don't really share his information because I've never asked him, but at some point, you never know. He might be on the channel, he might want to share his own information, but for now, we're going to look at the haul that I picked up at Goodwill and also at the auction in the evening. So when we got to the auction, so I'm gonna I'm gonna start at the auction and work backwards. When we got to the auction, we had four minutes to look over the items before the auctioneer started. I hadn't even registered at this auction. I go to a lot of auction houses, and when you get there, you just get your number because you're already pre-registered if you've been there before. But last night was a new auction we found out about. I was super excited, but we were running a little bit late. So when we got there, just a couple of minutes before the auctioneer started calling the items and I was so nervous that I was going to miss the piece that I wanted. So I was just like pacing back and forth and I'm going to show you what piece I was talking about but we're also going to talk about everything else or pretty much everything else on the table. Let's see how much we can fit into this video. Okay so I have my invoice from the auction so that we can take a look at what I paid for things. Now this auction house has a 10% buyer's premium but it's great that they don't charge you extra for using a credit card. I found that some of the auction houses add um, a credit card charge and some of them don't. So it's a straight 10% on top of the price that I'm going to be telling you and most likely I'm going to take a guess of what things will sell for because a lot of pieces were so interesting I had never sold them before. So it's anybody's guess at this point, but I'll try to take an educated guess and we'll take a look at what kind of profit I stand to make. So the first two items, I don't even know what country these come from. My guess is gonna be Indonesia. And this is what they look like. How could you not love these? They are carved woods. So I'm gonna show you the backs. And hopefully the lighting is good, as I always say. I'm standing in front of the big window. When I saw these, I fell in love with these. I did run a comp using Indonesian wood mask as the keywords. And you're doing all of this super quick because the auctioneer was flying and there must have been over 100 buyers there. Also, shout out to Dory. Dory is a subscriber and she was sitting behind me and she said, you're Lavender Clothesline. And I think she and I had talked before in the thrift store, but shout out to you, Dory, wasn't that fun last night? Dory got a beautiful group of stick pins, so um, I'm glad I didn't bid against her. But anyway, back to the masks. I did look them up. I'm expecting about $35 a mask, so they were $12 plus the 10%, $1.20. So these are what they look like. I just absolutely love masks like this. I can't remember if I've done Indonesian masks before, if I've sold them. I know I've done African masks. I think I did a mask from either Greece or Turkey. It was a very odd item, and that was years ago before I knew what I was doing. Not that I know what I'm doing now, but I love these masks. So that is the first group lot. $12, what a steal. So because Roger and I were coming into the auction quite late, I mean, never leave yourself four minutes to look at the tables of items. I usually try to get to an auction a good hour beforehand. I make a list on a clipboard. I sit down with my phone, check comps, you know, all the things you're supposed to do, which, okay, sometimes I come into an auction late and I just fly by the seat of my pants and try to use my judgment. This next item was a box of pins, custom jewelry. Now, none of these are high-end. I knew that right away, but I paid $5 for the box. So how can you lose on that? I will probably sell these as a lot. So a little cameo. It does have a bent pin in the back. This one is interesting. It looks like 
a guy with a turban on his head and his crystal ball, let me get out of the shot, is a marble. The rest of them pretty much are cameos. Look at this lovely lady. She is a necklace. So again, not really high dollar, but I love stuff like this. And I really didn't look close at this. They held them up quickly and I bid. So $5 plus the buyer's premium. Now, if you have been watching my channel for a while, I always give the disclaimer, I don't have a lot of knowledge. I have picked up some knowledge, thank goodness, as I've gone along, but a lot of times I don't know who the maker of an item is. I don't know brands that well. I don't know, you know, like with pottery, the different company names, but I do know quality. I feel like that is my strong point. So when I saw this primitive, style terracotta or redware bowl. I really liked this. And I feel like this will appeal to a lot of audiences. I think this is good for the primitive uh, collector. It is redware, I believe. Redware or terracotta. See, I don't even really truly know the difference between those two. Let me grab the list and see what I paid for it. So I paid $12 for it, and I thought that was more than fair. The next item or group of items was a perfume bottle lot and this was towards the end of the evening and I feel like I got a really good deal. I paid $20 for two, three, let me see if I can do this without breaking them, and four. So this is what they look like. This is kind of like an iridescent rainbow ribbed bottle and it seems like the stopper is in very good condition. I did take a few minutes before bidding and looked at the condition of these because condition with perfume bottles is everything. So this is like a purple iridescent, just so beautiful. I don't know that these are really that old but I felt like they were beautiful and for $20 plus the 10% I thought this was really good so $22. This next item I probably paid a couple of dollars too much, but I think I should still do fine. A pair of bookends. Now I don't know that these are solid brass. What I think is happening here is I think these are just a regular pot metal, I'm gonna call it, and I think they've been spray painted because they are chipping a little bit right there. And I did miss that because when they held them up, I hadn't even seen them on a table and I bid on them. But I only paid $12, so I still think I'm okay. I'm guessing these are gonna bring probably 20 to $22 something like that. We can see the old felt on the bottom that I always talk about. And I love selling bookends. I don't know what it is about bookends. I feel like it's kind of like a lost decor piece because so many people have given up books. You know, we're all reading online. So when you go into a new technology and you're reading online, the things that go with the old way of doing something sometimes fall by the wayside. And I think that's what bookends represent to me, kind of like a, a, a long ago era. Now people do use them for home decor, which is great, but I don't know that everybody's, you know, reading all the books that we have on these bookshelves, but these are great. Okay, what kind of dog is that? I'm going to call it a hunting dog. How's that? So I said yes to spray-painted dog bookends that are a little bit chippy for $12. All right, this item was my favorite, favorite item of the night. I will probably keep this item for quite a while before selling it, I think. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> this vase. I don't know if this is going to translate. This thing is beautiful. When I saw this art glass vase, I just swooned. It was a major swoon. I was like, oh my gosh, I love that. And I waited so long. So we got to the auction. The auction started at five. We got there probably about four minutes to five. And this thing did not come up to like must have been like close to eight o'clock at night. Finally, I said to the man pulling items, do you think you'll be able to pull some of these items? You know, and this was in the lot. I didn't want to point out the exact one I was excited about. And he said, yeah, yeah, I'm getting to it. <laughs> I was like, hurry up. <laughs> I just love this. And it does have its original sticker. And a lot of these have really good comps. So this is M-D-I-N-A. I don't know if it's pronounced Medina 
or if it's M. Dina, but it just says M. Dina Glass Malta. And Malta, I think, is a little island off of Italy, if I remember correctly. This thing is just so stunningly beautiful. I'm sure the camera is not catching it. And I think it's a purple color, very deep purple or blue. So what did I pay for this? $15. I was shocked. And when I won, you know, of course everybody was watching because I was buying everything. And I was like, oh, I love this. <laughs> and uh, a couple of people asked to see it. So just so beautiful. And like I said, I'll probably keep this for a good while. Sometimes I hold on to pieces that I buy for resale. It's rare, but I do, you know, display them in my home, either with them listed at a higher price than they should be, and that way if it sells, I don't feel bad. Sometimes I just put them in my home, and I tell myself, all right, I'm going to hold on to this piece and look at it for a month or two, and then I do sell it. Very few pieces do I keep you know, continually. Do I keep for good permanently, I should say. This piece, just stunning. And um, I will try to insert some comps here to show you what these M. Dina or Medina vases are bringing. This next item is an adorable little basket. Look how good this is. Now the auction house on the receipt, on the invoice, put um, a buttocks basket. I don't know that that's what this is because my understanding is when this center piece of reed is really recessed and it creates like a butt, that's what it's called. And this one, in my opinion, is more rounded. I don't think it's a berry basket. I don't know who knows what baskets are called because there's so many names, but I fell in love with this and I paid, I think I paid $15. Let me grab the sheet. Yeah, $15 I paid for this one. So I thought that was really good. I'm expecting probably 30 to 35 for this. So while we're talking about baskets, I'll show you this one. Look at the design on that. How gorgeous is this? Very good condition. It's lidded and it still has its original card of where it was made. So this is a Zulu basket and I thought that was fantastic. And it just gives some uh, different information, common colors and patterns. And um, I would imagine that this is genuine. So I paid $12 for it. So let me just say, if you have thrift stores near you, if you have a Goodwill near you or two that have just gotten crazy high with their prices, my best advice is search out other places to source, whether it be yard sales or estate sales or Auction houses, to me, are a very good supplement to what I'm doing. My Goodwills have been continually gone up in price, and I am spending less and less every year with Goodwill. Now, I can spend tens of thousands of dollars with Goodwill, but they're going to lose my business more and more because the auction houses are a great way to source. If this was in a Goodwill, I would expect to pay $30 or $40 for it. And here I paid $12. So auctions are good because number one, you don't have to um, go to a lot of different stores. You go to one auction per night or however many you want to go to. You sit down, you bring snacks, and you bid on things. You can't get any better than that. And also auctions have online. There A lot of them are online now. So you get to view the items, you know, through their photos before you even go bid or you bid online. So I hope I explained all of that correct. Auction houses are definitely one of my favorite places to source. So $12 for this Zulu basket. Absolutely love this. I also bid on this basket and I realized that the top was missing. So I paid $7 for this. Now this is listed as a Navajo basket. Again, I don't know the origin of where all these baskets come from, so I won't use Navajo in my keywords because an auction house could be wrong, but um, just beautiful. And like I said, most likely this had a top to it, but I thought this was so good that I would take it anyway. Definitely vintage. 
There were a couple of wood bowls that came up for auction. Somehow I missed bidding on the other one that I really wanted. That one was probably a little bit smaller than this one and the back had original black paint on it. Beautiful, beautiful. I love when the bowls have the original paint and it's a little bit worn. You can see the wear from actual use. But this bowl is gorgeous. One thing that I really look for in wooden bowls like this is that it's carved or made from one piece of wood. I hardly ever buy bowls where it has the strips of wood. In other words, pieces were joined. What did I pay for this one? $7 I paid for this. So I guess it's a dough bowl. I don't know that the round ones are called trencher bowls. It could be, which another bowl came up. It was a trencher and that one went quite high. But I thought this was phenomenal for the price. A little bit heavy. It's going to be a little bit big to ship, you know, dimension wise. But I'm going to be on the hunt for a good box to keep it safe, but try to bring it down a little bit in dimensions. Just stunning. And again, in Goodwill, this thing would be $40 or $50. So I was really happy. What will this bring? I'm not even sure. I'm probably going to say about the $30 to $40 mark. And uh, these don't last long in my store. So here is a little bit of a lesson learned and funny story. So the caller or the auctioneer is calling out, you know, what the auction would start at for a certain item. And somehow I missed the 20 and thought that he was calling out $2 for this candle box. So this is what it looks like. And what was happening was they had two gentlemen uh, presenting the items. Uh, well, they had carriers carrying the items to show them to the audience, but they had the main auctioneer and then they had a gentleman that was handing pieces to the carriers. And the main auctioneer went by what the first guy said. So he said, starting at 20. In other words, there must have been a silent bid at 20. So the caller said, and two. I should know this. All I heard him say was, and two. And I thought the item was going. And I was like, oh, I'll take that for $2. And then I got my bill and it was 22. Or he said, and sold $22. And I was like, oops. <laughs> but still a lovely box. Great condition. Now this is not super old. This is probably from the 70s or the 80s, but I thought it was really nice. And I'm not totally mad about the $22 price. Things like that happen. You know, I wouldn't want to be making a mistake with like thousands of dollars, but when it's a couple of dollars, it's fine. And I think I'll do fine with this because most people love wooden boxes as much as I do. This next item is stunningly beautiful in real life. It is a saddle bag blanket. This is genuine doesn't smell like horse. <laughs> so when I saw this, I just said, oh, Karen, you better put a number in your mind. I am fairly disciplined at auctions. Thank goodness. Once in a while, I go a little bit higher, but once it feels like it's a little out of control or could get out of control, I stop bidding. So I've done really well at auctions, but this blanket, $60. Again, I was thrilled. I will be selling this. I'll probably hold on to this for a week or two and price it a little bit high. So this is what it looks like. So it's really, it goes over the horse this way and then these pocketed ends with tassels hang on either side. This thing is stunning, so well made. I don't think these are hand woven. I would imagine that these are machine done probably out west somewhere, all guesses, but I'm sorry I can't stand back. The table is in my way today, but look at the print on that. Do we love this? Yes, we do. You know how I see this displayed in a home? You know those ladder, either ladder shelves or just people putting wooden ladders up against their, their wall and hanging throws on it? I would love to see this saddlebag blanket hung on one of those. And right now my living room is looking a little Ralph Lauren ranchy. So I might display to my own living room and then probably bemoan having to sell it. But I just love this piece, $60, quite a steal with the buyer's premium, 66. Now if I'm gonna sell it, when I sell it, I should say, oops, I'm thinking probably 150, I'll ask for it. I did check comps and there are comps, these are currently made, so I'm not quite sure about the age of this. There are some tax on it, so somebody might have tapped it 
to a piece of furniture or to a wall. I have to be careful to take those out. But when I went online and when I looked at comps, now I looked quickly because the whole auction craziness was going on. I didn't see them quite that high, but I'm going to price this at 150 because I didn't see patterns as good as this. And I think this pattern is just phenomenal. So for my keywords, of course, I will use Southwestern, Aztec, you know, tapestry, just beautiful saddlebag blanket. The next piece, I was pretty sure that I recognized this, that this belongs on the top of a desk and it has the flip lid. And I believe pen and ink was kept in this. It's a little bit too short for letters, but it could be a letter box. And I think we've all seen these. Again, I love this. I would love to see this in a kitchen or anywhere. I love when older pieces with a prior purpose are used and integrated in the things we have now. It not only saves the earth and it, it upcycles, but it just gives your home a feeling of originality. You know, as we all shop for our homes, we're all in Target and Home Goods. I feel like our houses could all look the same, but when I go into somebody's house and they have decorated either with pieces that have meaning from their family or they have decorated with pieces from a time, you know, gone by, I just love that. It gives the home a sense of originality. So yes, yes, yes to little boxes from a time gone by. Okay, so the next few pieces I'm just going to blow through quickly. These are Goodwill pieces. I do have more on the table, but I really want to get to a few clothing pieces that I picked up so that we can do hard goods and clothing in one haul. But these are from Goodwill. I think most of them from yesterday. And I will tell you what I paid for them and what I expect to get if I can even take a guess. So the first item, I grabbed him so quick. How good is this pink poodle? Do we love this? Yes, we do. And my guess, just a guess, a toothbrush holder? Because he has two holes and he has a drainage hole here. And as you can see, I paid $1.99. And I just think he's mid-century modern fantastic. Love, love, triple love. I would love to see the other pieces if, in fact, it's a toothbrush holder. I mean, it could be something else. I'm not quite sure what. Could be salt and pepper, like little shakers went in there. But then I don't think he'd have a drainage hole. So let me see. Probably says Made in Japan if he says anything. And Goodwill in their stickers. But $1.99, I said yes. This next item, another reseller put back. And I tried to act calm and grabbed it. I think this is fantastic. So it is a pottery vase and on the bottom it says B looks like 78 or 18 that could be 26. No marking but when I ask you guys on Instagram hey anybody know about this you guys all took guesses so I will leave some of the guesses down below or on the screen. Just beautiful in very good condition. It does look quite a bit older and I'm trying to see what color the clay is. It's pretty much painted all the way in so I can't see if it's a terracotta, most likely a redware. So if you have any guesses for who the maker of this vase is, I would love to hear them. And $2.99. I'm gonna guess conservatively probably about $40. Again another reseller put this back. I grabbed it. $2.99. Just a still life in a gold frame. I can never resist these. They're so good. And this one was even better because it says Made in Italy on the back. Do we love Made in Italy? Yep. Yes, we do. So I took this for $2.99. This won't bring a lot. I'm thinking $15 to $18, but definitely worth the pickup. Okay, and here comes the sun to kill my shot. I picked up this pillow. And what did I pay for it? $1.99. How fantastic is this? Do we love it? And a velvet back is always a good sign if it's the cotton thick velvet, not the fake velvet. There are a lot of velvets out there. The older velvets are like a thick cotton velvet. You'll get to know as you feel velvets. This is Chandler Four Corners. Very good, clean condition. 
and I will unzip it, check the insert pillow. I might even get rid of the insert pillow. I make that judgment when I take the insert out to make sure it's clean, there's no smells, and the insert pillow I will um, dry clean with dry L. So the pillow will be thrown into a fairly warm dryer, and this top piece cannot be machine washed. I will probably look at using dry L on that too, definitely steaming both pieces. So $1.99, and I'm thinking probably about $30 for it. All right, one more item, hard goods, and then we'll look at a clothing rack. So I really liked this candle holder, and it has a swinging pendulum, very nautical looking. This is Baldwin. I almost always pick up all Baldwin candlesticks as long as they were in good condition. There's the $1.99 that I paid. I'm gonna pull it off so you guys can see Baldwin. Baldwin is a very nice quality name. Baldwin also makes like door hardware, hinges, doorknobs, door levers, um, bottom kick plates, picture frames. What else do they make? I don't even know, but candlesticks are quite, um, quite easy to find in thrift stores and I do very well with these. Unfortunately, there was only the one, but I took it anyway because I really liked this style, this little, this little boat style, little sailing style. All right guys, so that is it for hard goods. I'm gonna wheel a clothing rack in and we'll take a look at a few pieces of clothing I bought. Okay, so the first item is this beautiful cardigan sweater. It's a woman's, fisherman style, gorgeous cable knit. And when I see this kind of tag, I always say yes if it's in good condition. This is Highland Home industries so that part doesn't really matter to me but this part matters made in scotland so there is the tag there most times these sweaters are vintage now let me just say when you see a sweater like this almost always it's a hundred percent wool you have to check for moth damage moths eat usually along the neckline along the cuffs and it's good to hold it up to the light. You'll see holes right away. But anytime I find a fisherman's sweater, whether it be a man's sweater or a woman's sweater, and it is from Ireland or Scotland, something like that, I always say yes. What did I pay for this? $7.75. When I started shopping, sweaters were, I think, $2.75. So a little bit of an increase there. And um, But these kind of sweaters, just gorgeous. I'm thinking probably $30 to $35. Next up, I couldn't resist this sweater. This is put out by the Super Mario Brothers Company. And let me just say, Think Geek or Geek, join in, geek out. It's official Nintendo licensed product. So it is just a fun Christmas sweater. Look how fun this is. I'm sure we all remember playing this game. And there's Mario running and the stars and the mushrooms trying to get all those points. How could you not love this? And let's see what I paid for this, $4.99. Now, why would this be $4.99 and the other sweater? You know, they're just making prices up as they go along. But I said yes to this. Now, I'm going to list this fairly soon. As soon as, you know, I get it cleaned and everything, I list everything all year long. I don't hold back anything. I don't say, oh, Halloween, I have to wait till, you know, August to list it. Nope, I list it all year long. That way, I know my items are on and I don't price differently. Like if I'm listing a holiday item at an off month, I list it for what it would sell for during the height of the season. That's just what I do. It's always served me well. Do I have to hold on to things? I absolutely do, but that's my business model anyway doesn't bother me and this Christmas sweater should do well. This next blouse was in a Goodwill. I went to three Goodwills yesterday. I forgot about one of them in the dollar sale. So East Earl, Pennsylvania is still having their color tag of the week, meaning it's probably been in rotation for about four weeks for the month. And they take all of the items with the oldest color tag and make them, I think it's a dollar five. So I am still going to that sale on Mondays. And I found this blouse, just beautiful. It's a very batik, B-A-T-I-K, print, and extra, extra large. Do we love that? Yep, we do. Originally, it was $4.50. Sundance Catalog is a label that I do well with, and I'm thinking probably $25 to $30 for this. I was kind of wishing this would be my size. I would love to wear this. 
but for now I'll just have to be happy selling it. Here's a t-shirt brand that I pick up quite often. This is The Mountain. I don't know if that's going to show. And I like to find these t-shirts in larger sizes. Mostly I'm picking up the animal ones. So I don't know that I've ever found a tiger one. And I think Roger actually handed this to me. Look at how good this is. And what size is this? This one is a 3XL. I paid $5.50 for it. And I'm thinking probably again $25 to $30. This next woman's vest I saw and it has everything going for it. I like that it has a black background. It's in very good condition. I love that it has the American flag, a reindeer, a heart, dogs. <laughs> How can you go wrong? And again, it was black tag. They had originally priced it at $6.99 and I got it for $1.05. Little dog on the back, little Scotty dog, I think. So again, will I list this now? Yes, I will, and we're in February. I think it'll do quite well. If I had to hold back like hundreds of items for the proper time, that would drive me crazy. So I just bring stuff into the house. Most times, the items that you're seeing in any haul video, it takes me about four to five days, sometimes as much as a week to get them listed because I'm one person. <laughs> I do have Lisa still helping me. God bless that girl. Uh, five hours a week for photographing. And of course, she will be editing this video because she is my video editor. But other than that, it is all me, all the shopping, all the cleaning, all the everything. So sometimes it takes me a while, but I'm going to put this on as soon as possible. Now, it does have a little tiny bit of schmutz on the front, but it looks like just a food item or a drink item. So I'm pretty sure that that'll come out. When clothing has extensive staining or whatever, I leave it behind. Even if it's high end, I'm going to say. If it seems like it's just going to be a lot of work, I don't have that kind of time. But something like that will come out fairly easy in the wash, I'm convinced. Here is an item that I don't recommend you guys doing this, but I do this. This is an unbranded top. No branding. Does it have a size? I don't even think it has a size. Oh, I see a little tag. Let's hope for branding. I didn't see branding in the store. No, professionally dry, clean, short cycle, low heat. No branding. But look how beautiful this is. This is one of those see-through mesh tops. So hopefully the woman will wear a little cami underneath it. All extensively beaded. Beautiful, beautiful. And I did pay up for this. I paid $8.99. Now, the day that I bought this was Senior Citizen Day, which is Mondays, and I think it's 15% off. So that helps a little bit, but I just love this kind of thing. And I will give measurements. If I don't find a size tag, I try to put the bust measurement right in my keywords in the title. So I measure from armpit to armpit and double. So let's say this is 20 inches from armpit to armpit. You double it 40 inches. I will put bust 40 inches. No size tag found. But I think this will do quite well. I have sold quite a few of these. I don't know what company makes this type of blouse because I don't find them that often. But just gorgeous. So here is a little chemise in a peach or apricot color. Right away I recognize this. This is Victoria's Secret. The older or vintage Victoria's Secret chemises can do crazy good money. So you do want to learn those tags. This one is not quite vintage, but still in beautiful shape. And I paid $4.95. Lingerie, robes, pajamas, um, different types of shapewear, all are a really good thing to learn because usually the buy-in price for those things are less expensive than a blouse or a pair of pants, most thrift stores. So a lot of times I can find these for like $2.50, something like that. And if you find vintage lingerie, it can bring over $100. So you do want to look through the lingerie section if you're not already doing that. And um, yeah, so I said yes to this one. Now this one won't bring over $100. I'm guessing probably 25 to 30 again. The next brand that I want to talk about, I don't know if you guys are finding or picking up this brand, JoFit. J-O-F-I-T. Let's see if I can get it out of the sun. Or JoFit. I think it's JoFit. 
It is an athletic brand. To me, this has the same quality as Nike. Sometimes it seems even a little bit better. I do well with this brand. $4.95 for this gorgeous track jacket. Stand back a little bit so you guys can see it without the sunlight. I paid $4.99 for it, where if this was Nike, they would have priced it, the thrift store would have priced it at like $9.95. So don't tell Goodwill. <laughs> so I said yes. I'm going to say probably $30, a strong $30 for this jacket. And in the same brand, I found Skorts, and I'm going to show you a few of those. So I think somebody donated their whole collection of Skorts. A Skort is built-in shorts under a skirt. They are used in golf and tennis, mostly worn by golf and tennis players. And $4.99, hold it back a little so you can see it. So I picked up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Did I count that right? <laughs> this is the time to get this kind of clothing on because golf and tennis is one of my biggest sporting apparel um, sellers. So those two things, I do sell like jerseys, soccer jerseys, football jerseys, things like that. But golf and tennis is a very good seller for me in the clothing department. So when I find something like this, where I just have to create one listing and then just copy it and put in, or I should say sell similar, put in the pictures for the proper color, that is a win for me. Now you can create a listing on eBay with just the color variations, but because I have 10,000 listings, I rather create separate listings and just use sell similar and plug in the color of the skirt that I'm listing, if all of that makes sense. So yes to Joffit or Joefit skirts for tennis and golf. Buy in price $4.99. This was Senior Citizens Day, so I got the 15% off. And I'm guessing these are going to bring probably a strong $22 to $24. This next item is a Tahari blazer. I loved the color of it. But normally I will not pick up a Tahari blazer if I have to pay more than a couple of dollars. This one fell into the $1.05 sale, so absolutely yes. They wanted originally $9.95. Can I just say I love that kind of sale. I love when Goodwill charges too much for something and it winds up going to the bins and we can get it there for $1.65 a pound or where they price something too high and it sits on the rack and then makes it into the $1.05 sale. I love that. So beautiful blazer and at $1.05 absolutely it is a size 8 so a good size nice and clean and beautiful style. And the last item in the clothing haul Walt Disney World 50. So I believe this was sold at their celebration and this is what it looks like on the back. Big spell out. Anytime a piece of clothing has big lettering across the front, down the sleeve, down the back, uh, you call that spell out. You can put that right in your keywords. I'm sure you guys are all familiar with that. And what did I pay for this? $4.99. So I thought that was pretty good. And I have no idea what I'm going to get for this. I have a tendency to pick up the Disney stuff that's Disney Parks or Disney World. So um, not that that's the only time I pick up Disney. There's a lot of Disney, whether it be, you know, different porcelain figurines, the snow globes, just on and on and on. But the clothing, I really like it to have a big graphic. All right, guys, that is the video for today. I hope you enjoyed a mixed haul. And as always, go out and get what's yours.